Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome over here to the Academy stream where we are ready to get into some hot and ready amateur league of legends here. My name's Travis T. Joining me here today is Smats and of course our ever so lovely guest Zoo as we are looking to uh, break it in with a very spicy matchup of 100 Thieves Nets in Team Ambition. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello, everyone. We're here. We're finally ready for more Proving Grounds action. It's I know. Been it's been a long time coming. Long. It's been like three months now. But three whole months. months. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Same here. And, I mean, when we're looking at these squads here, man, I mean, we got some new faces over here on from the side of Team Ambition, new challengers on the block. And then we've also got 100 Thieves Nets, a team that has found success time and time again inside of the amateur scene. They both made their way through the open qualifier to get in here. They are both inside of Group A. And yeah, to see exactly what they go into, I want to go ahead and start this off real quick by talking about how these two teams are looking against one another. And uh, there's some spicy picks that kind of get put up between these two teams, more so on Team Ambition. <laughs> Yeah, Team Ambition has some has some very interesting stuff going on. So if in case you missed it, the past couple of days, all of these teams did qualify for this tournament in the open qualifiers, and Team Ambition did so by playing a lot of assassins. They played a whole lot of Zed, a whole lot of Talon, mostly from the jungle, from their jungler anti. So some really interesting stuff. The Olaf as well thrown in there for this player. Super aggressive, very physical damage focused player, and uh, coming into this game, you know, 100 Thieves are the first seed, but I I kind of want to see more of that. You know, they seem very comfortable on it. Yeah, you know, absolutely, man. It's Their picks are insane. Like, they have, <laughs> you know, I think at one point, I, I believe their first game, they had a Talon Zed 2v2 yep. in the jungle. <laughs> you know, if that, if that isn't gung-ho, then I don't know what it is, man. Uh, yeah, but you were talking about, we were talking about this uh, before the stream goes live and whatnot, talking about how gun code this could possibly be, and Zoo, you were looking across the pond, and you said, alright, well, hold on, they're going against 100 Thieves Nets tier, and mm -hmm. uh, some of the things they were doing, you talk about that Talon Zed, there was some other things that you were looking at that you were like, Hold on one moment. Hold on. Pause real quick. Oh, you did what now? <laughs> yeah. The biggest thing that I saw when looking at Team Ambition was the their fact that they really like to play uh, range supports, enchanter supports with Chukis. Uh, he's definitely one of the standout players on that team. However, they usually don't complement it the very best. So they had three situations with range supports where two of them looked pretty bad. They had a Syndra Karma bot lane, and then they had a Jin Karma bot lane, which I'm not really the biggest fan of. But then when they uh, had really good success is when they go for something like a Caitlyn Morgana on blue side. Mm. You know, so just trying to make sure that their champions like thematically fit together and so they can have a cohesive game plan. Um, and if they're able to do so, you know, kind of pick like a traditional attack speed AD with something like a Karma, Morgana, you know, maybe even Seraphine I've seen a few times in this tournament. Maybe they can go for a push bot lane and have a point of contention versus Honor Thieves next. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, attack speed bot laner is pretty good right now with the new lethal tempo. Not nerfed yeah. yet. So, <laughs> yeah, I fully agree. I, I definitely want to see some more of that. The Caitlyn with lethal tempo as well is a big one. I think that champion had the highest presence in the entire OQ just because of how well she uses mm -hmm. that rune. So, uh, definitely one to look out for here in this bottom lane. Hopefully, for a Team Ambition, they can get their hands on that. But, uh, you know, 100 Thieves probably know this is going to happen. They're, they They have every opportunity to ban that one away <laughs> yeah uh, to speak on that 100 thieves coming into this off of the open qualifiers only team to be undefeated going throughout yeah. the open qualifiers got that 5-0 record and uh this is very scary for a team like team ambition because we talked about some of the issues they had and stylistically under these nets they seem like a squad that could have uh, a majority of the answers to anything they want to throw their way mm -hmm. it, it seems like their only weakness is power outages but even then, they've got they've got sword in the wings ready. Uh, 
you know, maybe he can roll swap to another roll in case another player decides to have a power outage as well. You know, that guy is just able to do everything coming straight out of Academy. But um, yeah, here's an example of 100 Thieves and how dominant they actually are able to be. They've got this marksman composition. They've got Sniper playing one of his signature bruisers up there and everything firing on all cylinders. Although if you do take a look at the damage chart, you'll notice um, a big spike <laughs> in that mid lane here. Like I was saying, Sword, Sword looking pretty solid. We're assuming that Sandy's going to be back for today, but you know, either way, man, this this Corky pick has got to be stopped. Not not bad for four months off from mid lane, yeah. right? So <laughs> definitely a good showing from him. But we do have Insanity coming back in, who was styling on everybody inside of day one. He felt like he had all the right moves to all these ganks that we saw uh, going through and looking at some of the clips. You saw people try to target him inside of some of those ganks, and it just didn't end up working out. But talking about it, I mean, it's not just that Maryville game, right? We got to see 100 Thieves show dominance in many different ways throughout the open qualifiers. So you were looking at possibly some of the picks that 100 Thieves Nets could bring into this that could be uh, very pivotal to finding the kink in the armor, well, loose armor to ambition is, is there a team that likes to just go in? <laughs> yeah, so I think there's, uh, I think there's definitely a set of champions that work well for 100 Thieves Next. Um, it's definitely a bit of an interesting dynamic. You know, Array is somebody, if you look at his teams historically, he's a player that's always kind of been played around. Now, he certainly has the capability of playing weak side, but traditionally he's been the hard carry on his amateur and collegiate teams. Um, however, in this sort of team, you definitely see uh, Fnatic prioritizing, you know, playing through mid top and playing around Sniper, especially when he's playing on champs that don't get free 1v1 push, like the Renekton Jace matchup that we saw versus Maryville. So in situations like this, I think that the one time where 100 Thieves really got themselves in trouble was a situation where they're playing Jinx versus three champs that outrange her. And in that situation, when you aren't necessarily helping um, your bot laner get the push that he needs, and then your support's roaming a lot into mid, sometimes at in inopportune times, then you find this situation where you know, Array is kind of catching sides on his own with a champ that's really, you know, squishy. It gives Maryville ways to get back into the game. And then you saw around Baron, it was really hard for them to close out the game against champs like Victor, Jace, Jin, um, and all that. But when you put Array on champs like the Jin in particular, or even the Ezreal, he played versus Golden Guardians Academy, um, you know, he's able to be a lot more free flowing, kind of follow up his team let Sniper, Insanity, and Fnatic kind of take the reins and just kind of follow suit. And he's a consistent consistent enough player to make that happen. Yeah, he's he might not get outranged in this particular matchup because he's going to be against Assassins, but it's still going <laughs> to yeah. be a problem for him uh, to try to maneuver those team fights. Yeah. So, the, yeah, thresh lanes, the Thresh lanes oh, work yeah. very well for them as well. So if you can find himself within a Jinx or an Aphelios, uh, with a Thresh versus maybe some, the things like the Zed, it's going to be really difficult for them to get on Array. I believe that. And, you know, talking about these Assassins and all these crazy picks that could possibly come up, we've mentioned Insanity. We talked about Sword briefly as well. I really want to kind of hone in on this mid-jungle, this 2v2 that we could possibly see because when you got this jungler that wants the hard carry and then over on the other side, you got people like Insanity Fanatic, you got to look at this matchup inside the mid lane smash. I'm going to start with you here. This mid jungle matchup, how are you feeling about it going in this 2v2? Well, you know, Insanity, he, he took, the, took the yesterday off uh, to recharge, you know, unplug, if you will. And I, I feel like he's, he's going to be he's gonna be pretty prepared to, to whoop some butt here in this game. I don't know if you guys got to watch the first two games that Insanity played with this team. But that was that was some filthy gameplay right there. The mm -hmm. Victor clip that I saw right there, where he dodged like four different skill shots off, all coming directly at him in this gank, and still made it out alive, topping the damage charts in both of those games. I think Insanity is going to be one of the strongest performing players of this entire tournament. So if you can see some of these guys on Team Ambition start to attack this player, maybe with those assassins, maybe with the Zed, the Talon, you know, it's it's uh, it's definitely out of left field, but it could be this, the thing that you need to take down a player like Insanity. If they can do that, then I think it does give them a pretty pretty big edge, um, but it's definitely going to be hard if you, <laughs> yeah. if you saw him play on Monday. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and yeah. It, it's it's a rough thing. And Sue, I would be very curious to hear what you have to say in regards to it, just because uh, the matchup going in here, you were 
saying some things you were looking at it you're like talon said i don't know about that in a mid 2v2 but <laughs> let's see what kind of interesting things they have to spice things up yeah when you look at teams traditionally that play through their jungler which you can argue that team ambition does um these are teams that usually prioritize lanes that get heavy push and you know the laners are usually have to be a lot more aware of their wave state and tracking enemy jungler so they can be a bit more independent if, in their wave management now the problem with team ambition is that they get themselves into situations where they have matchups that either should push and they're not um you know for example flexing syndra into bot lane with karma or they have situations where you know, maybe their jungle tracking isn't the best. So if you look at a team like Rogue, for example, uh, what really set up Inspired for success was having, you know, all three of his laners being able to draft for hard prio and giving him the space to make things happen. The problem when you're playing versus a team like 100 Thieves Next, when they have quite strong laners, um, not only that, but also the teleport changes impacted the way you can affect each other's lanes it's really incentivized just stronger laning. It's incentivized mid push, especially because that's the main catalyst to make things happen. And, you know, with the mid push and a strong laner, like someone like Insan Insanity, I don't really see uh, Ambition being able to run a double mage bot lane and being able to consistently push. And I don't really think that they're low econ topside um, versus something like a Sniper Aatrox pick or a Jace pick or an Aurelia pick or a Renekton pick. I don't think it's going to be very safe from the potential 1v3s that it's going to have to face. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I think that it could be a very spicy thing to see, though, man. I, I really want to see a Talon jungle or the, the Zed <laughs> mids up. I really want to see it work. Uh, I think that would be just absolutely fun to see. When I saw Team Ambition, I was just like, yo, hold on. They want to build this and this superstar jungler up anticipation to come in there and clap. But it's going to be hard. 100 Thieves... Nets is the raid boss inside of the group A, I feel like. You got that. You get that right when mm -hmm. you go 5 and 0. Oh, and there's a lot of hype between each and every single one of these players coming in here. And it's so big to see. And we talked about it a little bit. I want to kind of go back over to the top side of the map real quick. Because we were talking about it a little bit. General, uh, we, we get to see Sniper just get the pop off here is another thing that could possibly be something mm -hmm. to keep our eyes out on. Especially because you look across the pond, you got a traditional kind of chunky, weak side top laner. <laughs> <laughs> the, we, we have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in top laner, right? We, we've got Sniper. He's only played Bruiser so far. Decoy has only played Tank so far. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's definitely going to be a, a situation of strong side versus weak side. So uh, Decoy better be ready for some, <laughs> for some tough times ahead. <laughs> I think that's very fair to say. With that being said, we do have a graphic to be able to show everybody. We got our caster predictions to be able to show up Ooh. so we can see how our colleagues are voting. Possibly flame them if we so choose. As we do get to see, uh, first and foremost, everybody's got 100 these GGA for the first two rounds here. And that then it, it gets <laughs> mixed up. <laughs> You know, I agree with Kenobi here. Uh, I I'm fully aligned with Kenobi. I think he's 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 the only person who's got base state, and uh, I think NFT is really good as well. Or no team as is their uh, their full name. Uh, yeah, Kenobi, big ups to you. I think you're going to be right. Yeah, I, I'm I'm going with uh, a majority of everybody else who has NFT. That's me. Uh, I I'm I'm going with. Uh, but I got wild card at the end, so you know that ah. that's where I'm at. I, I got a little bit of faith there in regards to that wild card roster coming in and grabbing uh, themselves a good spot for themselves. So I think they have a, a good showing ahead of themselves. So it looks like it's going to be a good match up here. That being said, we are getting ready to go into game. So our lovely casters Dia and Rudud, go ahead and take it on away. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for the toss at Travis D. I very much enjoyed the desk. And Rudud, I'm going to enjoy casting alongside you for this next best of three. We've been hyping this up all day. We've been thinking about it for weeks on end. Now, what the matchup was going to be on the very first day of the groups. And 100 Thieves Next versus Team Ambition is definitely a promising one. Most notably is our desk highlighted from that jungle position. A matchup that you and I are both very, very keen on.
Uh, we're both obviously going to be looking at the mid jungle to see whether or not and who can come out on top. Coming into this one, it's obviously, as we've seen from caster predictions, from just who was able to go undefeated in the tournament, we're very clear on who we think is going to be coming away with the win here. 100 Thieves next are the outright favourites. Mm. But as we've said, if there is anywhere that Team Ambition are going to be able to win through, it is that mid jungle duo, right? To talk quickly on the teams and the players, rather, that we've seen anticipation, the jungler for Team Ambition play two talent games two z games and an olaf game this is a carry jungle through and through we've seen typically these trades of jarvan and zinzao no thank you he doesn't want any part of that he wants to be the carry and he wants to be the one making the plays for the squad it makes me it makes me very excited to know that we've got a jungler like that that's willing to pull things out of out of the ether and sort of go yeah well I i'm gonna play this even though nobody else is right now or especially since third party was eliminated one of our other teams in the open qualifier that was enjoying i will say the more volatile junglers and alongside him i think it's it's worth noting that nemesis is also comfortable with this the mid laner for team ambition and if we're not looking at the jungle i think that it's fair that we give quite a bit of credence over to nemesis who can flex in a lot of the same champion pools as this jungler can yeah, just in the open qualifiers, these two did share Zed, and as well for Nemesis, he was able to also pull a flex pick with his bot lane, a Nightstar who pulled a Syndra in the bot lane out, paired that one up with a Karma. So on this blue side here, Team Ambition, you have a little bit of flexibility open to them, but Dia, we've got our first draft ready and underway, and already one of those highly sought after carry oriented junglers taken away by 100 Thieves. The Olaf off the table to just limit a little bit here of what Anti can get away with. And the, the, the Caitlyn joining it as well makes me happy, uh, mainly because I, I would prefer that we not get too many Caitlyns coming through today. Very, very oppressive in the bot lane, and so much of this for 100 Thieves is going to come through Array, being comfortable in that bot side as well. By eliminating something like the Caitlyn, you do allow him a little bit more space on the weak side. With an Aurelia hitting the ban table from Team Ambition, though, you can tell that they're paying attention up towards General Sniper. Okay, Hecarim final ban as well, so another aggressive jungler taken off the board. Sniper still has a pick here, of uh, Jace is still open, we've seen him play the Renex in a few times, Aatrox has come out as well, there are a lot of these early priority uh, top laners that haven't been taken away from him. We've seen two or three bans targeted at Sniper throughout the duration here of the open qualifiers, and now with a few open and available, we'll have to wait and see where 100 Thieves next attempt to go with Team Ambition. Going against a bit of the status quo here, they've picked themselves up the Karma. Chukis has played this in the open qualifiers as well. Took that one down into the bot lane, as we mentioned, with a Syndra in one of their matches. So uh, could well also be flexed into the mid lane. And for 100 Thieves next year, if this Jin does get locked on in, I'm going to be incredibly happy to see that. Because the couple games that we saw of 100 Thieves when Jin was uh, piloted by Array, uh, we got to see a lot. Okay, last minute switch, but that's okay. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll take a little bit of a step back. The Nautilus coming through just offers you great engage, offers you great follow up and limits hyper carries coming through for Team Ambition, right? You're still likely to see something like the Aphelios come through. We still got something like that Jin available as well that Team Ambition could potentially take away. But with Nautilus on the board, it opens up Dombre to roaming, opens up this 100 Thieves next squad to carry on that top side. The Jin getting locked on in. I just can't wait to see what they're going to do because all of these picks so far focusing up toward that top lane, even though they haven't picked anything for it yet. Yeah, you touched on something so important to the 100 Thieves identity right there, and that was Dombre being unlocked in the bot lane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, with the Nautilus, I mean, we've seen him do it before, and I'm sure that we'll see him do it again. But so much of this squad's comfortability does leave Array relatively comfortable uh, on his own, so that Downbreak can walk around and pack the rest of the map. However, with a Syndra locked in alongside that Karma, something that you and I were both thinking of, and that you called mm -hmm. out mere seconds ago, it's going to be a lot harder for a Jin to survive on his own, because Syndra is it's good for a lot of things, but one of the things that she is best at is deleting enemy carries yes and if this bot lane if this <laughs> does end up going down into the bot lane we got it dear <laughs> talon locked on forward and this is going to be undoubtedly going into anti's hands it's been piloted by him twice so far in the open qualifiers gets his hand on it here in the first game of this best of three and if you wanted aggressive mid jungle 2v2 nothing speaks to you more than a talon syndra as that lethal powerhouse to try and find leads with I will say, as much as I hoped for it, I didn't expect the Talon this quickly, or even in game one at all. What I expected mm -hmm. from Team Ambition was that they would 
take a little bit more time, play a little bit safer, and then pull out all the stops in game two once they knew what they were up against. But this time, they're just going all out against 100 Thieves next, trying to find some sort of way to, with an unexpected strategy, catch 100, 100 Thieves off guard. But I look at the composition of 100 Thieves next, and I don't see a whole lot of holes in their defense. If anything, they got a lot of beef already, and with their mm -hmm. engage options, the squishies on the side of Team Ambition don't seem too safe to me. This is a boilerplate Season 12 draft already from 100 Thieves Next right now. Their second round of bans you can already see going to be targeted up toward that top plane, getting rid of some of those tanks from decoys so that if we end up seeing a lot of focus up toward the top side, these dives will be able to come through fairly easily. Still yet to see what Sniper will be taking in the top plane. I expect that we see mid pseudo blinded here, oh. unless we just see Jace. You ban out two of one of the, not necessarily tough matchups, but the difficult to kill matchups is the main issue here. And and getting the Jace in the top lane here, we know Decoy tends toward those tanks. There's a small chance that he sway sways away from those, but in the past we've seen him take the Scion, the Orn, the Mundo. These are all p powerful champions that can no. limit the Jace's capability. No, no, we're not. Are we? We are. No. We are flexing things around. So with a Leona locked in and now even a Zed hovered, although I, I hate to pay credence to it, it seems like we're going to be getting something very unexpected from Team Ambition as they too try and find some sort of answer to this okay. chase. And Yone gets picked up right now and this is a declaration of war from Team Ambition. This isn't going to be that heavy tank style that I thought that I was going to see from Decoy. He is pulling out something different and it is the very first game of the group stage. The old bait and switch will play five games of tanks in the top lane only to pull out the Yone in the top lane <laughs> in the him. first round of groups. We got him, boys. And of course, this could also be a Karma top. I think this actually fits better with Decoy's play style. Mm -hmm. We know that the Leona's going to be going into the support role, so yes, the Yone coming through is nice. I think that Karma is just attempting to be that limiting factor onto Sniper. Diving a Karma as well, not a particularly easy task. Her Mantra Q wave play does do very well, but you're looking at this 100 Thieves next squad. We've got Array on Jin, one of those picks that I've talked about and that I've seen in the open qualifiers. Be very safe and independent down in the bot lane. We've got Dombre on this Nautilus, which is so easy to facilitate roams and facilitate these dives. Yes, Karma can clear a wave, but what she can't do is survive for a long amount of time when she CC'd stunned up by Dombre. We've got Flag and Drag as well from Fnatic, and if Insanity is able to find mid-priority versus this Yone, there's going to be potentially four people in that top lane before you know it, and Karma, a squishy, squishy champion, can go down very quickly. And, and if there's one thing that I walked away with uh, is set up from our desk just before this, was how impressed Smacks was by the victor uh, from Insanity mm -hmm. earlier on in the open qualifiers. This is a champion and a player that we've got to keep our eyes on that we already knew about coming into these games. And so even with all of the explosive potential, all of the burst from Team Ambition on the blue side, I look at the red side and I am not by any means convinced because you've got signature champion after signature champion from the open qualifiers locked in for 100 Thieves next. This is a composition that they are comfortable with and it is going to take a mountainous effort from Team Ambition even with all of this damage that they have to eliminate more than one member of 100 Thieves in the course of a team fight. Yes, the onus on Team Ambition here is to try and find those early skims, just try and get those leads and start generating gold fairly early on. Obviously, they've got the late game scaling of a Yone, but outside of that, Syndra can delete one target, but her team fighting capabilities, when compared to a Victor, not quite up to the same standard talent as well. Again, incredibly good at being a slippery, mobile champion that can cause distraction and again, potentially eviscerate one target, but there still needs to be a lot more given in those late game team fights and that's where we're really going to be fading this 100 thieves next squad they've also got a really good amount of poke coming through the likes of curtain call the shock blast coming through from sniper the siege situation setting up around objectives you can already imagine team ambition now going to be needing to look for those flanks those unique angles where nemesis can come in on one side fate sealed from one angle anticipation as well with that talent that you can just traverse terrain with cheat out on vision essentially mm -hmm. if you're able to sneak around the enemies the, the flank angles for team ambition are going to be very crucial and if they get to a really good point where they've got this lead through the early game that's going to be the key that's going to be the signature because if they fall behind in these early stages dear those objectives are just going to be falling into 100 thieves next 
at hands time and time again. And there's going to be very little that Team Ambition can answer with. Well, we arrive on the rift again for the very first time today. I say it. We've got 100 Thieves next versus Team Ambition. And if you missed the draft, well, I'm glad that you've made it here now because we are going to get one heck of a game. One of the things that I was thinking about as we were loading in here uh, was also the potential for the early game to go in the favor of Team Ambition. One of the things that you were alluding to earlier, because we take a look at their draft, and uh, I mean, while we do have things like the like the Jason, like the Victor on the other side of it, you've still got Karma, Yone, and Syndra in your lanes. And one of the things that mm -hmm. Zoom talked about quite a bit was needing to have pushing lanes in order to bolster Anti's play style and keep him on the front foot as an aggressive jungler. Do you think that they've actually managed to achieve that in the face of things like the Jace, the Victor, and the Jin? I'm certainly hoping that the Yone in particular can find a push because Insanity on this Victor, typically a fairly weak champion. He does very well at going even, but generating leads early on, not something that he can go for. So the mid jungle in particular is somewhere that Team Ambition could look to focus through this Yone with that Q3. You can start to push that wave on out. Uh, in the top lane as well, it is going to be fairly hard to try and find priority versus this Jace. If you're using your spells on the wave, it means you're not using your spells on the champion and that's when Sniper can really start to go to town and try to punish Decoy here because as well as all that we have to add in a slight familiarity aspect of this we haven't seen Decoy and the champion and he may well be the karma god but we have to see that proven here because it's not a pick that we've seen from him before and as we would expect with these two junglers as well they're going to be starting on their blue buffs respectively 100 thieves jungler fanatic pathing up towards that top side to support sniper and we're going to have anti focusing on his bot side here leaving decoy to be that solo isolated member in the top side of the map gonna give a lot of uh, free push at least initially over to nightstar and chokies especially with the leona syndra is a potent lockdown that does come through at that level too if they can achieve it first array and Donbrey clearing out some vision alongside with this nautilus are trying to contest this as much as they possibly can and and yet and ever yet rooted we have to wait to find out exactly how that one's going to go because <laughs> even early on into this game the bot lane is already fraught with tension and it's one of the only ones that i see is a real place for these junglers to go quite early on with anti starting up towards the top side on the blue buff i see a lot of potential for him to be able to come down and make the most of the leona syndra stun combo so do I. They've got obviously a fair whack of CC in there and then Talon just loves having set up from his laners. You're able to find that passive bleed. You can just one shot this Jin in the early stages of the game. You can see Array and Dombre, they're fighting for priority as well. And there's going to be that little bit of communication between Fnatic and Sniper up on the top side as, Jace, do you particularly need me right now? If we spend a time trying to dive, we'll be able to get you enough of a lead to maybe sacrifice what's going to be happening down on that bot side. The alternative for that is, of course, that Array and Dombre just trying to force their wave in in a, one of the open qualifier games that they had. We saw uh, actually Dombre find an early recall, Array doing the same thing and finding this cheater reset after the third wave and going back to base sort of cheating out on that timing of the jungler trying to come and gank you because you already pushed the wave and you've already left. So uh, again, these simple mechanics of the bot lane that they're trying to execute on can come through obviously. Trying to stack a wave versus a Syndra, one of her priorities and one of her leading skills as a bot lane player and, or bot lane champion as opposed to those adcs is stacking away versus her not too easy because her wave clear early on probably the best out of most bot laners oh you got you got me thinking again Rude, dude, about about the possibilities latent in this top side as well i know we saw karma <laughs> and from the moment that i saw the karma locked in everybody even the enemy team kind of goes all right well i guess we won't really i don't i guess we won't really do anything about that but you've just reminded me that we are still quite early on in this game karma uh, uh, for decoy is still quite squishy and we've got sniper up against it decoy and sniper definitely one of the most hyped pickups of the off season has me looking up there to see if he can make something out of this jace karma matchup with the wave management that we already know is important in the bot lane but is even more so in the top lane yeah, Sniper, as as said by the 100 Thieves organization, their biggest pickup of the offseason. This young upcoming prodigy of top lane, touted to potentially be one of the best top laners that the NA has ever provided going into the LCS, hopefully at some later stage in his career. There are a lot of eyes on Sniper to see how well he can perform. Just turning into just turning 16 to put him at the age where he can compete, 15, excuse me, where he can compete 
in this tournament is exactly the, the sort of pressure as well that will be on his shoulders to see whether or not he's living up to the hype here. The first group stage game got himself on his patented Jace. And we've already got this wave, that wave manipulation you were talking about, starting to stack on up. Fnatic not quite in position to go for any of these dives, but already got a lot of priority here. And we were talking about how well these junglers will be able to match up against one another when this top lane isn't going quite so favorably for decoy already down a wave in farm you can see the anti so an anti more than happy to move his way down here or, or down onto the bot side and keep himself nice and far away from this scary jace exactly it's it's all about you know setting yourself up for success especially on that talent i like that he did pay attention to the bot side even tr tried to go for a small invade but unfortunately not too much to be found fanatic has cleared this out and that's the kind of experience that you get with a jungler like fanatic on your side hundred these Next, definitely benefiting from that, and Fnatic is somebody that, even since OQs, has been a silent yet crucial part of the team, because I look at this roster and the name, despite familiarity, doesn't bounce out at me as one that is going to warp game states around him and is going to become, I don't know, 10-0 at the 10-minute mark. <laughs> it isn't that kind of jungler. Fnatic has so often been the kind of jungler that will mind control you and that will get his lanes ahead, and he's looking to do so right now, paying attention to this bot side. He does get spotted out by the minion, unfortunately, but already a gank attempted. We'll see which one comes through next. Yeah, and already these pings on the minimap as well. You're talking about this oh, mastermind sort of general status that Fnatic's taking. Immediately, he's walked his way down to the bot side. I see pings on the minimap into exactly where Anticipation is sat. Sat there in his wolf camp. Scared pings. Okay, be careful. Talon's going to be right here. He's got a window of opportunity right now to make a play happen. And in this mid lane, Nemesis not having the best of times. Insanity has done a very good job here at bullying out the Yone. But if this Talon tries to get in range here, you can see here. Him just lurking on this Raptor camp. Uh, there's a chance here for a play. Insanity not level 6 and fairly low on mana. Certainly going to need to call for some sort of jungle support. And just as we say that, Fnatic sat ready and waiting here. He's going to be spotted out on this ward that Nemesis has placed over the wall. I don't think that that is going to be seen either. So Fnatic here operating under a little bit of misinformation Ooh. that maybe he wasn't spotted. It just got swept right at the very end. That is, that's actually really tragic for Fnatic, but so, so good for Team Ambition. Zoo talked about earlier <laughs> the fact that Team Ambition did need to have this great vision to be able to track the junglers, especially on somebody like Fnatic, who can be the catalyst for the rest of his team. And even with that small little play there, just threatening the gank onto Insanity, already turns into a cascade of information going in the favor of Team Ambition and now allowing Anticipation to potentially start on an invade himself trying to find Fnatic in the jungle. Pop that Scryer's Bloom and you can see it on your minimap. Fnatic has to pay respect to this but as does Anticipation knowing the teleport mm. was just used in the mid lane. Yeah, he, he really needs to be cognizant of where his laners are right now. Decoy would have to go a very long way around or take an absolute ton of harassment to try and help out his talent on an invade to the golem. So, rightly backs away, recognizes his team's lane states and says, you know what, maybe I don't go for the invade onto the jungle. But here, dear, we're in a sort of six and a half minutes now into the game. Not a lot of action in terms of kills of bloodbath that we've seen from early stages and we are starting to see a little bit of the class of 100 thieves they are mounting cs leads just over in that top lane as dombre already out of his lane for nemesis just walking in but oh lord the hook going wide and then the fate seal changes things for dombre as he flashes away he still gets ignited on the way out and yet will manage to survive with both supports and the jungler of team ambition drawn into the mid lane we still haven't got our first blood yet Rue dude but it was hundred thieves next that was ahead of the play they're making his wait here for the first blood of the main stage Bye. event right here in the group stage underway first blood gonna have to wait a little bit here but look at this top lane right now we get a little glimpse fanatic did try and find a little gank onto decoy unsuccessfully he's gonna lose his bot side jungle as a byproduct of that but you can see in decoy's build path here fitting the trend of what we expected of decoy here he's gonna be playing that supportive role now looking at Dombre here, he doesn't want to be giving over too many objectives, too many camps, and just that little bit of presence saves Fnatic's Gromp. He's already on his way down here to make sure that he can keep uh, keep the gold cycling. But the Bandle Glass Mirror in the inventory for Decoy. This is hardcore support build for the Karma. You're not going to see anything like the Shattered Queen coming through that crown. It keeps her nice and safe. It is going to be supportive. We're expecting to see the Shirelias here, maybe even a Moonstone if we're feeling particularly susceptible to damage. Now, one of the small things that I noticed in that 
small interaction between Donbrey and Antti in the jungle is that Antti was forced to use Smite. And it got me thinking, hey, it's about eight minutes, and we've got Rift Herald and the Dragon up. But interestingly enough, Rooted, we haven't seen either team opt into that. Instead, going for ganks like this, Fnatic jumping in with the Cataclysm here is going to help his team pick up the first blood, and nicely done for him, does get his mid laner, Insanity, who is insane on the victor, quite ahead. There might be even more here. Yes, nice pops. knock up. And he should be able to get out alive. He is invisible for the time being and does have backup on the way. Next wave gonna crash. 400 Thieves next. The decoy's on the way down as well. Insanity without a flash is gonna get jumped on by Chookies and a bunch of damage comes his way with Nightstar picking up a kill and Donbre getting executed summarily right after by an unleashed power. Two for nothing then in the mid lane for Team Ambition after, capital after capitalizing on the flashless mid laner of team ambition 100 thieves next get the exact same consequence here dombre was forced to burn his flash in that skirmish that we saw no kills come from and both of the flashless members of 100 thieves next are given over to team ambition a really nice engage from chuki's flashing forward recognizes insanity has no way out if he's willing to expend that summoner spell and a slight overextension by the 100 thieves squad to you know, get them a little bit of a reality check here. Yes, Team Ambition coming into this one as underdogs, but they're not going to be giving up this game freely here. This series is a best of three, and they want to be making sure that they can uh, keep themselves very much competitive here. We're neck and neck in terms of the gold, and as we take a short break to check out this replay, let's see how this one ends up going down. Right now, of course, we know that Nemesis falls to a very quick flash flag drag cataclysm with a lot of damage from Fnatic, but afterwards, it was the real thing where we had Nightstar and Chucky's roaming all the way up. 100 Thieves next got dragged in quite deep, but who? They're making another play down here? Nah. No, no, no. 2v2 on this bot side. I mean, the crown did get popped by a deadly flourish, but it's about ready to come back up. And you can tell, right, this is, this is simple League of Legends. With your Mythic versus no Mythic, you're not the team that are going to be... Uh, you are the team that's going to be trying to fight for 100 Thieves next, and the team without a Mythic down in the bot lane. Array still lurking, or still looking here for that Gale Force to come through. And the Syndra with that Shattered, Pre Shattered Queen is going to be absolutely fine in that bot lane. No, ex no ex engages particularly going to go too favorable. I'm interested by this mid lane though because you can see Insanity is going to have that laser upgrade already and Nemesis playing incredibly respectfully. We talked about Team Ambition wanting to get things going early. Nice faint seal but oh lord it isn't enough. That Cataclysm that instantly came out from Fnatic changed everything and as Dawnbreak gets taken down on the bot side it's only justice that Team Ambition gets something back but I love the focus with which they are attacking Nemesis in the mid lane, the one place where Team Ambition can scale. Exactly, this Yone not getting a second to breathe in the mid lane. A really good job by Fnatic once again. This guy has no flash. We're going to keep punishing it time and time again. Positions the flag and drag behind him so that if he tries to use that fate seal, he only gets knocked up and then the gravity well does all that was necessary to receive the stun and the kill to come through straight after. And as well as focusing a mid lane, we'll have to keep Andy, our eyes on Andy get it. Andy get it. Andy got, got it. it. Let's go. All right. I am happy and well. So is he, at least for the time being. But as he gets jumped on by Sniper and Ooh. Donbrey, finding a kill back is still very much a success story. Nemesis is coming over and no fate sealed, no knock up landing. Does unfortunately spell the end the play for Team Ambition, but I keep looking at their plays and going, ah, that feels a little bit unfortunate, but in reality, bro, dude, that's not the case at all. They've still managed to keep themselves even. They've managed to pick up both objectives. These guys are doing great. Trade positive overall. They managed to steal away the Herald. They get a kill as well. It goes onto their Talon as opposed to the support Karma. Again, top end stuff from Team Ambition to get away with it. They were in a numbers disadvantage as well for the most part. Chuki's a little bit late to the play. Not really able to make too much of an impact. But still, Team Ambition are having a whale of a time so far in these early stages of the game. Already have managed to pick themselves up a dragon as well. So this is already you know, a really good showing from them. This Talon that we saw very highly prized my anticipation has been doing exactly what it needed to. Four kills out of four in terms of the kill participation oh, no. as well. And that is exactly what he's looking for. Four people. Oh, oh lord, this is just so scary. The Cataclysm coming, down seals, Chucky's in. No flash, no way to escape, but the Eclipse is buying a lot of time as he eventually gets taken down by Insanity. Handing this victor his third kill of the game. Hunter Thieves got what they came for and didn't lose that much in the process, Rudude.
didn't lose anything in the process. They even burned Nemesis Teleport, which is just going to be icing on top of that cake right now. Any kills and assists you can get on a Victor. This is a point that I was trying to bring up a little bit earlier. Mm. Yes, they're focusing down a Yone who has no flash, but they're also accelerating stacks onto Insanity here, getting 25 of those passive stacks every single time you are part of a kill or assist. It means he's got probably the Q, or definitely the Q and the E. He's going to be working his way towards that W, and once you've got all three of those upgrades, Every ability starts to slow. Your E slows, your Q slows. You are going to be making life very difficult for anyone to A, get away, and B, keep yourself alive. Speaking of getting away, Nemesis might just have to do that as, holy lord, another two abilities come through from Insanity, and he pops back to grab the 25 gold from the Rift Herald. Still does lose several turret plates in the process, though, as those expire in the next five seconds. Nemesis had his last chance to be able to pick some of that gold up, and now it is just the thing that is keeping Team Ambition within touching distance of 100 Thieves next. 15 minutes into the game, and we're essentially even, but Array might not feel like it yeah this is the classic Jin experience for array right here he needs to play with this respect anticipation can jump over this wall take him down yes flash and cleanser available so they may well be put to good use here but i'm looking at team ambition and saying that we need more from them remember their composition prides in these early skirmishes not so much as we get later and later into the game 100 thieves next are more than happy with trading these objectives that may even get first turret down in the mid lane before that three-man band of team ambition able to find anything so this is again really good trading overall on the map but this time it's in the way of 100 thieves next and like you said the more that this continues to America's stagnate and be even huge teleport really up here bad. decoy is so low and this this is a foregone conclusion rude dude and the teleport from insanity is much more for security than anything else is that karma ends up going down decoy knew that everybody could rotate up he knew that the mid lane tower had just fallen but team ambition having lost that blanket in the mid lane of the security that the mid lane tower provides for a moment at the very least are caught unawares First Unleashed Teleport then off the game does net a kill here. Post 14 minutes at Insanity, looking to leverage his lead around Summoner's Rift. Wasn't even needed for that one, but General Sniper at this stage in the game has more than enough damage, particularly up against a Karma. Again, as we mentioned, not gone for any defensive items here. This is support Karma on a top laner's income, so she's feeling pretty confident about the ability to support people. So far, Decoy hasn't really been a part of any plays that Team Ambition are looking for. I expect that to change, and we can see that with 20 seconds on this Baron spawning, this is exactly the time that Decoy needs to group and about the best opportunity for Team Ambition to try and take a scrap. Fnatic has got the Cataclysm once again, but the flashes are up on almost every single member of Team Ambition right now. They've got to find some way to blow those, some way to lock people up in a little bit of more of a creative fashion for 100 Thieves. As they surround this river, they're going to find the first engage onto Decoy, the flag, and drag to follow this up with a Fate Sealed in response and a huge Scatter the weak changes everything. Array flashes away from the solar flare, gets ignited by Chookies, but finally manages to burn the cleanse. Still alive as his team is getting taken down in the river. Or is it General Sniper that's turning things around? He ends up picking up a double kill and changing everything for 100 Thieves. Oh, he comes in a little late, Sniper, but he makes the impact happen. Anticipation may well fall here to Fnatic. Has two levels, Aww. doesn't have enough damage, though. And it is Fnatic to pick up that kill. 100 Thieves next, they find the fight here. There was a, a glimmer of hope. We thought that there would be an opportunity that they would take this fight. It starts off with Deeper getting that. caught with a Nemesis. Oh. Three-man scatter the weak off the back of that as well. The Solar Flare, seconds, milliseconds too late, would have taken it away down instantly and also changed the course of this fight. But it is General Sniper coming in a little later, but still having that impact. Gets a double kill in the play. We know that Anticipation gets taken down off the back of it. And it is those 5v5s that we know are going to be in 100 Thieves' favor that ends up going their way here. Team Ambition not out of the not out of possibility just yet. They've still got this really strong mid-game skirmishing style of composition. And when that Gore Drinker comes through for Anti, we're expecting this to be the time, like the peak opportunity really, to take down this 100 Thieves next squad. And they've probably got one more go, dear. And then after that, 
it becomes really difficult to fight up against this long range composition that 100 Thieves have got. E extremely, and so much of this is because Team Ambition have such a focus on being able to burst down one member. But we look across at 100 Thieves, you take down a Ray, you've still got Insanity and Sniper, and well, if you're being taken down yourself in the river, you've got a whole lot more problems as that than that. Anti does manage to get away with the second Rift Herald up. 100 Thieves may just go for this or for yeah. him once again. Can't get out of the wall this time. And Anti gets taken down for the sin of stepping back into territory that was no longer his. Yeah, vision control not particularly abundant for Team Ambition here. He needs to try and pair up with two keys and get in this river together, but... Oh, the bait seal, bait seal of the wall, there we go! Insanity might be just be taken down here. Flashes a little bit too little, a little bit too late, and ends up going down, essentially forfeiting the Rift Herald as well, I might add, Radoon. Three people like spending their ultimates here. It's worth noting Sniper still has TP and the TP from the Jace much more impactful than the TP from this Karma. That Herald not going to be started up just yet, dear. Can't be throwing out those accusations when the jungler is dead. So we're going to have to wait and see if there's more priority placed on that with a minute left before it despawns into the Baron. It may just be both teams saying, hey, you know what? Mm -hmm. Not this game. We'll, we'll come back for a re second Rift Herald in game number two. But for now, uh, we need to sort of see what is next for both of these teams. If it's the Baron start starting to spawn on him, we've probably got a couple of minutes before either team tends to put their attention in that area of some of the Rift. Because it's a very early time to be trying to take that down the big purple worm. For 100 Thieves, would look to see them extend this lead that they've got for themselves. Start to control one side of the jungle, steal away some of those jungle camps and start making Anticipation's life incredibly difficult because there was a point at the end of that fight that we saw in the river where he actually had a two level lead over Fnatic. You can see in this CS as well that he is getting a lot of resources from his team and is currently looking to be one of the leading carries. We've got Nightstar on the Syndra as well, who's done a very good job at keeping himself alive and finding those kills. But if this talent is continuing to find farm, that's going to continually be an issue for 100 Thieves. If they're able to stoke, go into a bot side, for example, control the vision around that and start to take down these turrets, that is going to be the, the sort of key to their success. A lot of gold still standing on some of this rift right now. Only three turrets taken total in this game. With one fight here, this game could swing either way very quickly with the amount of gold that's still standing. Extraordinarily, interestingly enough, 100 Thieves seem to be sort of nulling all potential for a fight right now by leaving General Sniper and Insanity in their respective side lanes. Insanity was up towards the top side, clearing waves while Sniper was down towards the bot. And honestly, Rudu, I really don't mind it at all because yes, you're giving quite a bit of gold to somebody like Decoy by pushing waves back and forth, but so much more value is being gotten from gold that goes to both your Jace and your Victors. We've already seen demonstrated in these fights, 100 Thieves, despite the fact that the gold is still within touching distance, 4,000 gold is by no means a game deciding factor it's still looking like where they're putting the gold is having much more value because they don't just have one night stare, one nemesis that they need to dump everything into. They can throw the gold across anybody and have it come out in their favor. Exactly. You know, even Battle Nautilus could come and start to make a bit of a resurgence okay, well, here. Those <laughs> Merc Treads. <laughs> Sorry, I've done you dirty, that idea. And, I give you an you inch, you to... take a mile, Rudin. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of you, unfortunately, but you, you, know, you make a very valid point still that Fnatic, even on this job, and has gone for a very bruiser oriented build. And Nightstar, yes, he's got that Crown of the Shattered Queen, but that gets popped. Fnatic honestly has a very real opportunity to take that 1v1 versus the Syndra, even uh, with the build that he's gone for. Two stopwatches as well. A dumb pick from Don Bray. Oh lord, and half healthing instantly. Nightstar as well. You've got a big bruiser Jarvan up in the front lines and just. You don't have the numbers, it seems, to contest as Nemesis finally comes down. You do get an answer back, and it is for now the one for two in favor of Team Ambition. But 100 Thieves next aren't done just yet. Chookies getting sniped out over the wall by General Sniper is exactly what 100 Thieves needed. The long range composition from 100 Thieves, they are able to take damage from or put out damage from so far Teleport. away here. Teleport's coming in. Fourth shot could be used to try and secure, but I don't think he's going to have it up for when that time comes. Looks like they're just going to burn it down immediately, and Nightstar's TP 
ultimately used in vain. Using the tempo, though, of 100 Thieves trying to find a base, this mid-tier one should fall as a consequence, but Insanity may be able to loop back around here. So overall, 100 Thieves coming away, even in the fight, positive on the trade. A bit akin to what we saw five minutes ago, really. Oh my lord, wait a minute. Insanity might just get a kill right here, and he does. The lockdown, just enough for a raid to take Sparing. down Nemesis, and you're right, this can turn into so much more rude. Sniper TP'd in behind level 15 on this Jace. He takes down Decoy in one fell swoop, picks up the kill, and now with two laners off the board, Team Ambition, they have to find an answer to this Baron here. Anticipation has to be looking for his way in. Dombre running point, marking the entrances. Not going to let him in for free here, dear. 4k on the Baron. Not at all. Nautilus knows it's his job it's just to auto attack the Talon. Keep him outside of the Baron pit. But Anti goes invisible. And with the Baron going low, he's going to try and jump over the wall. Doesn't oh. quite secure it, though. And as Chucky jumps in after his jungler, he's going to get deleted by a fourth shot from Array. This is Hundred Thieves next at their finest. Baron at their backs. And now the resets to come in. This is the time now when those economy turrets are going to be so powerful for 100 Thieves next. There are three turrets still standing outside the enemy's base, and I imagine they're going to go for more than just those. The gold lead sits currently roughly 6,000 gold. Check back in when these turrets have started to take in and when 100 Thieves next have put their full push out onto the rift and see why they can go, what they can accomplish here. Decoy, clearing vision on his own. This is the wrong spot to be in, buddy. He should be gone. Flash from Fnatic, though, does get traded and decoy albeit summonerless manages to survive for the moment all then set up for this drag in the one place where team ambition can predict where hundred thieves will have to be and try and set up some sort of flank some sort of play to take away a game that is slowly but surely slipping out of ambition's control Nemesis looking to take this top tier one and without teleport, this is a sacrifice of the bot side entirely. And when you don't have the Baron here, this is going to be one that, uh, you know, is going to fall very quickly. <laughs> Sniper at three and a half items here is absolutely murdering Team Ambition. Look at the armor stacks for the Team Ambition squad. Hint, there is one plated steel cap and then the support that is picking up the armor. Everybody else is, is a, a simple mat to Sniper right now. We'll see when that next accelerated shock blast gets thrown out. Little does Decoy know that he could have been taken down in a mere instant right there, but the biggest problem for them isn't Decoy's life, it's the life of their inhibitor tower, and Nemesis going on the offensive is going to try and rectify it. Jumping in, the assassination does come through, but onto Chucky is weirdly enough, and as the stuns just dissuade any additional push from Hunter Thieves next, the Baron minions are not going to be so easily dissuaded, continuing to clear down on Team Ambition, keeping them inside of their base, and their base, it will not be for much longer. Look at Dombre for the hook oh here, gonna God. try and search Fnatic. Decoy already got chunked down, and as Fnatic goes on the engage, tanking up this tower for way too long. Nemesis finds another kill, and then jumps forward onto Insanity, forcing that stopwatch to flash away as well, but it's not going to be nearly enough to save the victor. Hundred Thieves are trying to clap back from so far away, and Nightstar just barely manages to live with a massive shield. Nemesis sidestepping the hook ever so slightly, but Hundred Thieves, despite losing one, two members, they don't let up. They never let up, Rude Dude. Array not even a part of the auto attacking here, just fires his ulti from across the map and puts out a load of damage, a load of zoning, a load of control in the fight. Mid lane inhibitor is going to be on its last legs here, but it will survive. One more swift push from the 100 Thief squad should allow them to take that one down, but for the time being, the ever-present threat of super minions is isolated to the bot lane. Good skirmishing, honestly, from Team Ambition. You can see the potential that this composition had in the early stages with the Yone finding that fake seal. He's now at two items. He is fully unlocked during this game to try and pump out the DPS. But they've not quite found the full miracle team fight just yet and are going to have to continue to search for it. Dragon spawning in 30 seconds. They need to see if they're going to you know, weigh up the pros and cons of taking this fight right here. If they put Soul Point into 100 Thieves next hands, it puts a clock on them even more so than the composition already did. The later this game goes, the harder these fights get. Your team ambition, you want to be trying to search for these fights, but the Talon up in the top side of his jungle looks like they're going to be valuing gold over trying to take this fight.
I love the way that 100 Thieves ended up entering that jungle as well. You saw the vision laid back down from Chookies to take away some of the tempo that 100 Thieves had gotten. But as soon as Donbre arrives back into the enemy jungle, he throws out a hook into a brush going, Hey, if there is somebody there, I will absolutely fight you. No questions, no qualms. Dragon ends up being taken as a result. But Team Ambition are not exactly too happy about it. Instead, going for a play on the other side here, trying to find Sniper underneath oh no. his own tier 2, and they don't even get that. Chookies instead gets deleted on the return, and with Insanity throwing out boatloads of damage on the other side of this, there is plenty more to go around. Nice start, Decoy and Chookies all meet their untimely end, and now it's time for the teleport, the revenge of General Sniper. Into the bot lane he goes, Nemesis going to stand absolutely no <laughs> chance. Immortal Shield Bow will literally be no consequence here. 100 Thieves next. They've taken down four members, Super Minions wailing away on the base. And this could very well be the first game here of the group stage going their way. That is going to be it for 100 Thieves. They are just playing with their food at the moment. And even an Invisible Talon cannot escape their grasp. It is a matter of padding the stats, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, and completely decimating these remaining towers. Solar Flare not going to quite find Sniper. Neither will the redemption, but this nexus is all but gone as hundred thieves find that lost last auto and find themselves what you already said was the very first game of the group stage. One and zero then here in this best of three, and it wasn't without hope for Team Ambition as well. Yes, a hundred thieves next started to look very convincing in that end stage, but we got to see the glimpses, the showing of what Team Ambition can accomplish with their style of play here. They were going blow for blow in the early game, stealing away heralds, going even in trades off the back of it and the drakes as well sometimes going in their favor team ambition not out of this one just yet here if they can keep their eyes on the the real core of what their compositions and what their team style looks to achieve they were able to go toe to toe with 100 thieves through that early game it came down to a couple of over extensions and some really nice compositional uh, sort of differences in the later stages of the game that mm -hmm. 100 thieves next could really punish them with yeah it really did feel like especially once we hit uh a little bit after Baron, I'm going to call it 25 minutes, that there was really nothing to be done, like you said, compositionally. But before that, Team Ambition, as you already illustrated, was keeping up quite well. And yet I felt like somewhere in between the time where Composition took over for 100 Thieves, uh, that Team Ambition had somehow already lost control of the game. Now, I don't know it, and I'm, I'll say, Rudud, perhaps you do, but you know who I know will have the answer? That's our analyst desk, our very smart analyst desk on the other side of this. I can't wait to hear what they have to say about the very first game. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on back to the analyst desk. We got to uh, see what was a fantastic victory in game number one of this best of three. 100 thieves nets now it's time for us to kind of figure out how things went there uh I'm, real quick zoo i'm gonna go ahead and throw it right over to you we're coming right into this uh the draft that we got to see come out of them they did do the the syndra over into the bot lane uh this mm -hmm. time thing that they did they flitzed around karma had this yone swap around uh it was a very interesting draft coming out from ambition mm -hmm. yeah i mean they had some bit more synergy with some of their pieces. For example, if you're going to put Syndra bot lane, having it with Leona is certainly better than having it with a Karma. However, some of their pieces don't really make sense. Um, for example, blinding Yon mid when you have Talon jungle, you know, you're not really giving yourself the ability to get mid push, especially with an OP champ like Victor available that's able to control melee zone quite effectively. Then you're putting Karma top into a matchup where she can't control the wave and Karma top is usually best in situations versus lower econ champs where she can control the wave. So even though the game went a bit even to start, um, you know, this situation, this draft is not something I want to see again from Ambition, just because if they run out or they run out of gas quite quickly, um, they don't have much consistent DPS. And then it's hard for the, their lanes to play into each other. Mm -hmm. And frankly, 100 Thieves next going Victor, it's certainly the effective pick, but it's definitely the safer pick than they could have taken. They could have taken something like a TF or a Rise or a Zoe and then opted for a Wave 3, Wave 4 dive top. And then the game would have been broken up, uh, broken open a lot faster. But, you know, 100 Thieves just played it slow, played it safe. There's no reason for them to speed it up against a comp like this, and they're able to just take a clean victory. 
Yeah, honestly, just about every champion's gonna work into Yone right now. Yeah. If I'm being completely honest, <laughs> they nerfed him directly. They nerfed Lethal Tempo. They nerfed mm -hmm. Shield Bow, Wits End. Everything about this champion is super, super weak at the moment. So just about anything that Insanity could have shown in this would have worked. And yeah, Slow and Steady wins the race in this case for Hundred Thieves. They they know they're against a team that likes to play uh, fast and loose with these assassins, and they make it work uh, on their own by just sort of avoiding that stage of the game where they can get tripped up. Yeah, and talking about getting tripped up, we got to see some very clean plays come out from Anti here. But that dragon play was a big turning point. We saw a very even gold, and then that second dragon fight happened. We do have a clip of that, I do believe, here. So I do want to see that. And Sue, so you had a couple... Oh, no, this is actually the first blood clip here. <laughs> Yeah, we're well. First, we're seeing the weakness of Yone right now. <laughs> when you don't have alt and you don't have flash, because those were burned earlier, it's very difficult to operate against this Victor and Jarvan. You have so much zone control and so much access to underneath this turret as well. Now mm -hmm. that one was responded to by a couple of kills by Team Ambition, but just a good example of what the problems are with when you pick this champion in the mid lane. Yeah, it's something with their comp, um, actually playing off that replay, um, Syndra and Leon are able to come mid and get two kills, and they're able to clean up, and it, it looks like a bright spot for Team Ambition, but because of the way their comp, you know, executes later, where they have, uh, they have no siege, they don't really have the best scaling DPS, especially on the AD side, it requires them to be able to get Herald and get some sort of, you know, artificial pumping gold, early and get some sort of map position but those two kills actually sacrifice their base timer and wreck their tempo and it allows array to be able to get first push on bottom and then shift in a herald side at eight minutes now it was good on ambitions jungler to be able to get the steal make the hero play that's yeah. you know that's great but you're not really giving yourself a point of control at that point so really you know two kills fantastic but you come out of it with even less control than you had beforehand and with the comp uh that's on a timer like this you know, it's not really a situation you want. I 100% agree. And, I mean, we got to see time and time again uh, from the example you just showed with uh, Anticipation Anti over there. He is, uh, you can see why they want to play through this jungler here. Anticipation is showing us some big plays. But here's the clip I was talking about earlier on. And you had some thoughts about this, Zoo. Yeah, for sure. So the big thing with this Drake was... Um, they were actually first, and, you know, with the comp like theirs, they really need to be first in River. And I think what they did well was putting themselves in a good initial position to be able to control this Drake. But they actually had a better position than the one they executed. They had um, Nemesis on that side flank with no wards. And they ended up, instead of forcing 100 Thieves to kind of come into them and kind of, um, you know, engage with them or try to poke them out and bring them into a point where they could get pinched, they ended up... Uh, opting to give up the flank position and just reach into a uh, hundred thieves next. And if you're ever playing versus a sort of poke comp like the one uh, they have with Victor, Jason, Jin, you know you're going to get your initial engage and it's going to look promising. But the time you separate afterwards is where that range is really going to come up. So you know a good Yon engage on two on three, I believe. But you know in the situation like that, if you're not just going to clean burst everyone immediately, you're going to get picked off on the way out. And that's where the flank can really salvage, you know, your ability to teamfight because you can hit them from multiple angles. Uh, I think once they mis-executed that dragon, I feel like the game was, you know, that was kind of the nail in the coffin for that one. And just a bit of a slow burn afterwards. Yeah, I, I feel like the slow burn is probably the best way to explain it because it just felt like 100 Thieves, they never let go of the lead, right? Like 100 Thieves Nets was always in control. They were always the team that was being pivotal about things moving things around, and it felt like you looked over at Team Ambition, and they kind of got rocked there. So they were a little bit dazed there. So it's just a big example of that. But here we got another replay, Smets, if you could, because this is the uh, mid lane play where they were actually able to get a nice little fight for Team Ambition at the end. Yeah, we're, we're seeing that Team Ambition are still finding some creative ways to get things started. And while we were watching this, I, I mentioned to you guys that uh, Array did the Jin thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> The, the way that I can explain this is that, you know, no flame to Array, but it always irks me when I see a Jin player in range to cast spells just start ulting for no reason, <laughs> because he's still got all of his bullets available, he still has his Q that he can throw in there, but, you know, big curtain call move, look shiny, you gotta, gotta pop it. 
Um, I feel like this could have been a little bit cleaner for 100 Thieves if that didn't happen. Obviously, it still went their way because they ended up with river priority, but mm -hmm. it is it is something to think about. And uh, on the back end of this one as well, we're we're, we're seeing that example. Uh, we're seeing one example of what Zoo was talking about <laughs> earlier, where Team Ambition aren't really respecting the tempo and the uptime that they are given in mm -hmm. the situation that they are. Yeah, if you're down if you're down tempo on the map and the enemy gets a neutral objective, use that to just get your push and use that to take a base so you can at least approach the opposite side of the map even with the enemy team. As soon as you fish for an objective, like a tier 1 mid, you're just giving your tempo right back to the enemy team. You're going to find yourself pinched and you're going to go back to a situation where you were 30 seconds ago where you had no control. Yeah, and uh, we got to see examples of that over and over again in terms of how the game continued to go on and on. But, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a best of three series here. It is going to go over to a game number two, so we are going to take ourselves a short little break. When we come back, we're going to be able to see game number two between 100 Thieves Nets and Team Ambition. So make sure you do not touch that browser, as we will be right back. 